Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Save yourself, man! Next week, MPs looking into disinformation and fake news are expected to publish their final report into the way our personal data has sometimes been manipulated for political influence, even at the highest levels of power. And it's happening right around the world. Here's our media editor, Amal Rajan. When you report fake news, which CNN does a lot, you are the enemy of the people. Go ahead. Mr. In just a few years, the phrase fake news has entered mainstream culture. And then they've got the nerve to say, we're fake news. You and your colleagues have fallen right. into this trap of fake news. It's a calculated and corrosive term, often deployed by those trying to discredit journalism. But the term fake news captures an urgent issue confronting modern democracies. Disinformation in the digital age. In America, authorities are investigating social media's role in Russian interference in the presidential election of 2016. The nearest thing in Britain is the House of Commons Select Committee inquiry into disinformation and fake news. Over the past year, it has taken evidence from regulators, tech companies and those at the centre of allegations around the targeting of voters during the Brexit referendum. The inquiry is looking at four areas in particular. First, whether social media firms are neither platforms nor publishers, but a new kind of company which has legal liability for harmful or illegal content. Then there's the issue of electoral law. The committee wants new rules for digital campaigns, not least around the issue of shell corporations being used to hide identities. Next, what was the precise role of Cambridge Analytica? The committee has looked at the impact of the British data firm and has said its CEO misled them. Finally, there's the Kremlin question. To what extent, if any, did Russia weaponise information during the Brexit referendum? And why is there such a gulf between the government's warnings about security and the response of tech companies? Facebook is taking disinformation more seriously and has appointed the charity Full Fact as its first independent fact-checkers in Britain. One thing I'm aware of is it might not be Facebook in 10 years' time, or it might not just be Facebook. We're going to need to write rules through open, democratic, transparent processes that apply to all these companies. So if a company... Or not Last year, Facebook was fined the maximum half a million pounds by the Information Commissioner for serious breaches in data protection law. Have you seen satisfactory evidence that they've learned and changed? I... I'm hopeful that we'll see more of that change. And that suggests I, you haven't so far. I haven't so far. I think it's yet to be seen. What do they need to do to comply with this regulatory regime, which they're currently not doing? It's not good enough to say, here's what we're doing. We need a proof point, and we need to. Facebook can't mark their own homework. Social media platforms like to think they are a benefit to democracy. Across the West, that's in dispute. Amal Rajan, BBC News. I've been